please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we remain standing, please? Um, I'd like to have a moment of silence for Brian Latham, member of the Budget Committee, who passed away this week. Latham. Latham. Thank you. I'd also like to have a moment of silence for Nancy Waddell. Nancy passed away uh, last weekend, and uh, she'll be sorely missed. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for January 7th. First of all, I'd like to welcome you back, Rick. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to see you back here and in good health. Um, we have public comment period. Is there anybody here who's wishing to speak from the public? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Mike Edgar. I live at 7 Hands Terrace. And I uh, wanted to mention that uh, the USS Virginia, we're trying to get an organizational meeting together. It's, right now it's been scheduled for next Monday night, the 14th. There's been a time change. We're going to have it at 6 p.m. upstairs uh, instead of 7. So I wanted to do two things. One was to mention to people about the time change, and the other was to put a request out and a call for people who are interested in uh, hearing about the committee and finding out if, you, in fact, you could participate and uh, contribute to it. We really appreciate it. So all of you that are interested, uh, please show up. Thank you. Thank you. I would hope the, that people do from the, com the community get involved with that. I've been involved in the past one from the USS Hampton, and it's, uh, it's a great experience. It's a great chance to meet some of these sailors from the, uh, from the ships and also work with them as they do some community projects here in Hampton. And I would encourage anybody that if they have a chance to, or they have an inkling to want to do that, to please do so. Come over to their meeting next Monday night at, at 6 o'clock and uh, see if it might be something that might fit into your schedule, but we, we hope you do. Yeah. Thank you. Is that in the conference room, Mike? You said upstairs? Up. Upstairs in the conference room is the one that's you know, next to the town manager's office. Excellent. Thank you again. Anybody else from the public would like to speak? Seeing none, I'll bring it back for the board for announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Uh, nothing at the moment. Um, no, I just wanted to uh, mirror what you said about the oh. Navy committee, and I hope that if anyone's interested, they show up on Monday at 6. So I will be there. Good. Sorry about that. I did make a quick note to myself. If I may, I just want to suggest to the public um, I know we've had a little problem, I guess Regina noticed a problem a while ago, getting the waste picked up. Um, if those of you who have recycling carts could try to hold the cart and put it out every other week, if, if it's not filled to the top, if it's only half full, so there are fewer stops for the trash collectors to handle, it might ease the burden a little bit, especially in the bad weather. So I think that would, that's what I do, and I would hope if we can encourage people to do that and just put out your uh, recycling bucket when it's full. Good point. Jim? Nothing. Rick? <clears throat> yes. Oh, I'd like to um, thank all of uh, the community for all the great support that they've given me. Um, with good thoughts, prayers, foods, and treats. I've never seen so much food. Um, <laughs> and uh, thanks to Max wrote that wonderful story. And I have to tell you, I got so many compliments. I got calls from England, the Azores, oh my Florida, about 40 calls from Florida. Huh? So, you know, it was very nice. And I'm doing very well. It's six uh, weeks this Wednesday. Good. And, um, and so is Masa. And I'm back, and I'm also back at work. Thank you. Good. Good. We're glad to have you back, and uh, you. 
it, it's amazing to see what this community does when 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 people are down a little bit. Hampton's a wonderful town. Hampton is a great town. So next thing we have the approval of the minutes for December seventeenth. Also move, Mr. Chairman. Non-public and public session. Right. Okay, so we have a motion. I'll we have second. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Have a consent agenda. A donation to the One Revolution in memory of Nancy Waddell. That's it on the consent agenda. I'll make I'll that move. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, would everybody please note that January 8th, that's tomorrow, 2019, is the last day to submit petitioned warrant articles for the 2019 annual town meeting. The selectman's office does close at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Work continues on the Church Street Force Main construction. Uh, in fact, they're out there working tonight. I just came through the construction zone. Ooh, please drive carefully as work crews are working on Church in Church Street and along State Route 101. Residents are reminded that there is no parking on any street in Hampton from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. or during and during snow emergencies. I, I bring that up again simply because I went through the town at 5 o'clock in the morning and there were quite a number of cars that were parked overnight on the streets. If we have a snowstorm, that's going to be a problem for plowing. Mm -hmm. Residents and businesses are reminded that trash and recycling carts are not to be left on the sidewalks or in streets during snow emergencies and overnight except for the collection day when they are scheduled for pickup locally. The Department of Public Works has announced that, that uh, due to uh, the holiday, there will be a holiday pick tra uh, tree pickup, which um, is going to start, actually started uh, today and will continue through uh, the next few weeks. Uh, please leave your tree out, undecorated of course, uh, next to the curb on your trash pickup day. That's important. Um, We have a wetlands application for Route 101 West Main uh, re water main replacement on the uh, east side of uh, the road from Bechtel Court all the way down to uh, the water tower. Wow. We uh, also would like to note that the transfer station for wood construction and demolition waste, that's big material, is closed and uh, that collection is closed until January 11, 2019. Yeah. And I also have, uh, and I don't know who would be interested in reading it, but I have a, uh, a, a short, almost 100-page dissertation on uh, the harbor dredging for Hampton Harbor. So if anybody would like to read it, I'd like to get it off my desk. Uh, it's taking up a lot of room. But uh, you can have it to read if you'd like. You'll have to return it because we have to keep it as a permanent record. And there is scheduled tomorrow night at 5 p.m., a special meeting of the Board of Selectmen to consider any petitioned warrant articles as we do every year. So far, there's only been one today, so okay. that's it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions from the town manager on his report? Mary Louise. Yes, I have a few follow-ups. Have we clarified on the private detail rates, Fred, because that has been a question at the budget meetings. Have we haven't had a chance to and instead of $90 that everybody was talking about, have we had a chance to? Um, I haven't, but uh, oh, okay. I, I do know that the $90 figure was incorrect. Incorrect. I do know that. Okay. And then on the lease purchase on Mack trucks, are they, have they been delivered yet? Does no, they have not. Oh, okay. But the uh, are, we are operating on the position that we put in a legal article for the lease in 2018, and we just are going to carry through in the next four years. I, I think we have a recommendation for the board for tonight when we get the ward articles, yeah. so that we can discuss that and make, right, make a final decision on where we're going to go with this. Okay. And hopefully, we can all everybody in town can be on the same page. Excellent. Um, let's see. The this, oh, disposing and, and hauling that waste. Um, that's that because there's a new contract. We're gonna we're gonna touch on that tonight too. I think that is on the agenda. And for those of you who received the ridiculous um, <laughs> response from DOT on that rail trail, that is 
the most foolish document I have ever seen in all my years on this board. Is that on the agenda? Yeah, I was just going to say, is there anything else? No, uh, this is under, for the town, just town managers. We're not talking about right, town uh, And the, uh, we're going to do the town, oh, and the industrial surcharge fee, which I have asked for a number of times. Are we going to be able to get a little help from the... Uh, that, that should come under old business. Oh, okay. That wasn't under his report. Okay. Regina. I just have a question for the town manager based on a memo he sent to us on property taking for the bridge. I know you're the town representative for the uh, Harbor Bridge meeting. I am, and it's, it's actually on the agenda. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. That's fine. I didn't see it. All right, no, That's no. what Number you get for things. Jim? Oh, <laughs> seven. I have nothing on the town manager's report. Thank you. Thank Rick? you for your report. Thank you, sir. Very good. Uh, old business, 2019 Warren articles. Uh -huh. Wow. The blind man who couldn't see. Oh, poor Mark. I don't know if the board wishes to reconsider any of the articles that yes. are there. We have a brand new Warren article that was received today um, with regards to smoking. <clears throat> And that warrant article is a petition. Uh, it says to establish a no smoking ordinance stating that it is unlawful to smoke in any public park, cemetery, cemetery, common, beach, or other public property of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire. Persons in violation of the provisions of this ordinance by law shall be subject to a fine. My opinion, Mr. Chairman, is that that's an advisory article because it doesn't contain the necessary language to, uh, in fact, impose the fine or to um, impose a restriction on any particular property. Mm. Hmm. <clears throat> so if it's, if this is a Warren article and it, and it gets done, then all it is we'll have to do is we'll have to bring up another Warren article next year. To, that is correct. To give us the wording so that we can properly enforce and properly and enforce yes. correct correct we couldn't do that at the deliberative session mr chairman we couldn't amend it do you think it would be pretty far outside the corners of the four corners oh, of the okay article, so. okay i mean the, the proposal that had been pre presented to the board for their review was more than a page a page almost a page and a half of wording <laughs> And uh, that would be quite a bit of additional oh. verbiage and wording that would have to go into this article. Oh. I'm not sure it would be a, a legal thing to do. But not to me, it's up to town council. Hmm. Is there any other warrant articles that we want to? As the board is probably aware, we have had a uh, an ongoing uh, discussion with the budget committee with regards to the Warrant, potential warrant article for the lease purchase agreements for the trash trucks. Mm -hmm. um, the budget committee is concerned that we should have a warrant article. Uh, I've reviewed this extensively. Uh, there is no legal requirement to have it. We have inquired of the Department of Revenue Administration, and I probably should let town council talk on that one so that uh, you can get it straight from the attorney's mouth, so to speak. Um, <laughs> There is uh, a guide that the Department of Revenue Administration puts out that um, contains suggested language for warrant articles, and one in particular on page 34 talks about equipment lease with fiscal funding clause, that is, an escape clause, which, of course, uh, Article 13 from last year's town meeting called mm -hmm. for. Uh, DRA... Uh, has a little note here uh, that says in subsequent years an article should be placed on the warrant to raise the annual payment. If the annual appropriation is not approved, the lease terminates. Um, I don't see any support anywhere in any statute or rule that calls for that particular advice. Uh, moreover, the um, uh, the article involved did warn the voters that what was being talked about was a five-year lease and that there was, uh, this was just the first payment. So it's sort of like uh, the collective bargaining articles in that only the first year is funded. 
nevertheless, out of an abundance of caution and rather than fighting a fight later on to say, well, you should have done this and DRA suggested you do this, um, we have, Fred and I have conferred with Public Works and uh, have come up with some language that uh, DRA may not like because it serves to warn the voters as to what the consequences would be of defeating the article, but nevertheless putting in front of the voters an article for the second year of appropriation. And uh, uh, I know DRA would rather the article be a, a stripped bare article, but there's so few people that actually show up at the deliberative session to hear the consequences, mm -hmm. and, the di and the consequences are so um, uh, serious to a non-appropriation. And the way we did the article last year, Article 13, is the way we've done it all previous times, and it's been fine every time we've done it. Um, that it meets yes. the letter of the law. That particular article being the first year's appropriation did, and yes. And always met the letter of the law. Yeah. What, what does NHMA say on this? Have you asked them? Um, NHMA has uh, said about things going in two different directions. <laughs> first, they say they, they don't believe another article is needed and that this can appear in the default budget as well as in the operating budget. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they say, uh, confer with DRA and uh, look at your contract. So um, I think safety is important with this one and uh, the community could in fact vote on this if fully warned of the consequences and then you, the, uh, <coughs> the board would get a true picture of, of what the community believes about this one. I think we already got that last time we had our, we voted on Article 13 last year. That, that could be one position on it, yes. So, Mary Louise. I don't know that you can put in more clear English, five-year lease. Right. A lease is a lease, right? It I, is. I, I don't understand what on earth those people are trying to do. What, what article here? I'm fishing through uh, my... 13. It's 13 from the last, last year. year, Mary Louise. Oh, well, I know. It's I a remember separate, that yeah, from last separate, year. It's not in the... There's <clears> none <throat> in the current. Uh, you Fred, did remove the article from the current warrant. We removed it. Fred, yeah, it Fred has second. some suggested language if you wish to go that route, which is the I, safe route. Fred. I'm, Sir, as one, one member of the board, yeah. I'm comfortable saying we passed a five-year lease warrant article clear to the public in 2018. Fooey. I don't know if FUI is a legal expression. Okay, Regina? It is. Um, P-H-O-O-E-Y. I got to say, I went back and forth. I, I think I believe I was the one that made the motion to not have it as a Warren article. And the yep. reason why I did that was it was shown as a five-year lease last mm -hmm. year. And I know that a lot of voters are not too fond of yep. having to vote on a lot of things. So I think that if town management and town council are comfortable with the way it stands without a Warren article, that... I am comfortable to not add the Warren article. Yep. Jim? Uh, no. I agree. Rick? I agree also. Good. I think we reaffirmed our vote of a couple of weeks ago that we don't need to have another Warren article for You did. Good. Okay. That's a good thing. Are there any other article, Warren articles we want to I have a few. I was asked by the Budget Committee if I could bring some back to the table at the Board of Selectmen level since... We're going to be wrapping up, hopefully, all the town budget stuff yep. at our Thursday meeting this week. So ones that were noted of concern to the budget committee, uh, well, the master plan, which I'm not really which quite sure why. Is that is, that is um, the master plan is Article 11. Okay. That was a uh, split vote on the budget committee and I know that Jason's here I'm not sure if he wants to come up he had yeah. a we did ask him if he could come just to yeah sure. yeah pretty detailed discussion with the Great. budget committee on that yeah I thought so and yeah. I thought maybe if you could just clarify <laughs> what happened at our um, level so that people at home could see yeah. right so they had um, asked several questions at their December 26th meeting to which I looked at that meeting and did respond to their questions um, one of the comments um, that I got out of that meeting was they were concerned if we go through this process of a master plan phase one and phase two once we have this plan you know is it going to sit there is it going to be utilized and, and one thing that I talked about extensively was the possibility of doing something like an implementation committee at that point in time 
um, we want to assure the public with this um, with this article that once we get through this process and have a, an adopted master plan, the new master plan, that it right. is not going to sit on a shelf. It is going to be an active document. It's going to be a fraction of the size of the current document, which I brought to the table at that yep. meeting, mm -hmm. um, which is basically unusable because all it is is a plan from 1985 that has been updated here and there over yep. time, so it's grown exponentially and not in a user-friendly format. Um, if you look at in the, working with the planning board on this, looking at some neighboring communities and the things that they've done, like Exeter, for example, their master plan that I believe was adopted last year is under 200 pages. Wow. But it has a great implementation schedule. It's very concise and to the point. It covers all the topics required by law and the statute. Um, so it, it's a great example. Um, there's other communities doing that too. But it is something in the RSAs that the planning board is responsible to prepare and amend from time to time the master plan. Yeah. That's been neglected for many years, mm -hmm. and I think that it well, I know that it'll help us and the planning board with the work we do. We see many large applications come to the planning board. It'd be good to have a guidance document with teeth yeah. that we can use to help amend our zoning ordinance, amend our site plan and subdivision regulations, and do other planning for the community. So it's something that the planning board supports extensively. Um, I. In my nearly 20 years working in planning, I know from other communities that it's critical. It's the Bible, basically, of planning, I guess, for lack of a better way to describe it. So it's, it's extremely important, and I hope the voters will support it. Thank you for the explanation. Move. Yes. Um, in your capacity as town planner, mm -hmm. will, you, will you take the opportunity once the um, master plan is complete, the new cleaned up version. Mm -hmm. Will you perhaps put on your calendar for once a year to sit down with whatever planning board is, is uh, available and kind of foc have them focus on the master plan? Well, I think it'd be more frequent than that. I mean, we're, we're talking about, when you're talking about the implementation committee, mm -hmm. just as an example, you're talking about a subcommittee of the planning board. Mm -hmm which you know may meet you know once a month or quarterly or whatever they choose to do and they'll be working on the recommendations okay. of that plan they'll be working on the things that have come from the public process of the both phases of the project Good. so it would be a living document that's the easiest way to describe okay. it so it'd be more than an annual thing it'd be an ongoing thing so instead of a mishmash mm -hmm. right. uh, 12 inches high right you're going to streamline mm -hmm. and get the relevant uh, um, material together. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I just have one thing I like Any to add. Well, uh, on this. Yeah, on the okay. plane. Um, yeah, I have more articles. Yeah, I know. That's what I meant. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to say that I think this is very important. I've known I've talked to you since I've been at Selectman yep. a couple of times, and I know you've at sometimes even been frustrated not having certain parts of the mm -hmm. plan that you can yeah. go and look at and yeah. figure out whether it should be done, whether it shouldn't be done. And I'm also going to tell the public at home that I'm 100% for this yeah. and not having this implemented as we should right now is the reason why I'm saying no to a lot of other articles that we have on the warrant this year. Because without having that plan, yeah. it's like, what, you know, what are the ordinances? What is the zoning? Do they have to be changed? I know uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago you had a presentation from Tom McGurk at your planning board meeting. Yes. Now Tommy's actually on the zoning board meeting too. Mm -hmm. And he said a lot of things that I think made a lot of sense. And I yeah. think that something that the plan, having an updated one, not from 1985, right. is going to help right. the town a lot. And I think it's hindered the town a lot in my view. So Yeah, I think it'll I, help to alleviate a lot of the concerns that are out there right now. Mm -hmm. Right, so I yeah. hope the uh, public sees yeah. it that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming Jim, in. Jim, you have anything on this one? Not on this one. Right. So is this um, for the town master plan or the beach master plan? This is plan? the town master plan. Now the so beach master different. plan, yeah, yes. the beach master plan is considered the neighborhood plan of the overall town master mm -hmm. plan. So it's something, of course, this newer document would incorporate by reference as the current document does now, but the beach master plan, the HBAC, and so forth would continue to do the updates as they mm -hmm. do them. Mm. Yeah, because um, I know that um, originally uh, that this 1985 um, master plan was really never even finished, I don't think, because um, I was on the, um, the town 
not the beach one. I had wanted to be on the beach one, but I ended up on the town one. And uh, all of, and we had a grant, and all of a sudden the grant money ran out, and there was not even another meeting, and it was never finished. So it needs a more of a professional slant to it. Okay. Right. Mm. Okay. So I think that we're still in favor of it the way we were. Our last vote was 5-0, and I think we'll continue yeah. with that. Yeah. I would hope the budget committee will reconsider. Right. Oh, and we thank Jason for all his work. Absolutely. He's really been working on it. Okay. Okay. So the next. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. I'm just going to go in order of the warrant. Sure. Um, the next one I'd like to discuss at the board level is Article 19, the Firefighter Safer Grant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, I wasn't expecting to happen what happened with this one. I mean, I guess there was some confusion as to why we're using the grant because when the grant is no longer applicable, now we will have these additional employees that we have to, you know, pay. Obviously, we'll have to pay the full salary amount. Well, originally we had talked about doing two right. things because the need is there to have right. four additional firefighters. Right. right. So the I need mean, is there. So if if and we and I think we all agreed on that. Mm -hmm. And I think I think by applying for the safer grant doesn't mean that if we don't get it, we don't need those firefighters. We still need firefighters, right, exactly. but right. the, the, the grant the cost for three years. will actually help us reduce Same the cost for three years, and I think yeah. that's what we, all of us are trying to do. Yeah. So I, I, I was a little baffled by the, uh, the budget committee and, the, and uh, some yes. of their, their tactics the other day. I, I, I watched it, and uh, I think, uh, I think uh, going for a grant, I think that's what we, you know, we, we're doing that to try to save the town money. Uh, but that doesn't right. under affect the, the fact that we need the four firefighters. Right. I just want, yeah, I mean, I just want to bring it back to the board. So does anyone have? Yep. Rick? I, uh, I just want to say one thing. I just said 1985. It was later than that. Oh. I was on it. Oh, okay. I want to throw that out. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amy, uh, on the yes, the fire department is strained to the breaking point now. We need more bodies in that department. I appreciate. Uh, approve this and I still strongly approve it it's a good way to save money for the public for the first three years but we need adequate personnel in the Hampton Fire Department and if you're home and your house is on fire and you want somebody to respond you better be cognizant of the need for more bodies in that department uh, I, I am a very strong proponent of this article and I hope the public uh, agrees to support their fire department well, the other, the other thing I saw on there is when they go to 10 men, what that's going to allow them to do yes. is when they have 10 men, yes. they will be able to have an ambulance at the beach fire station. Yeah. They'll be have an ambulance at the uptown fire station. Yeah. You will have two ALS ambulances in service at the town at one time. Yeah. Right now, if you do that, you have to take an engine out of service. Mm -hmm. They won't have to do that then. And you'll have not only faster service, especially at the beach. Now, I'm not saying they haven't done a great job because... On every ambulance call it's at the beach, they always send the engine. So you, you get an engine, yeah. at least you're getting people there to, to do uh -huh. the medical treatment they need. However, if you have an ambulance coming, you, the ambulance will be there that much quicker. You're also not going to have, you're going to reduce the number of engine runs at the beach because on those mm -hmm. basic ambulance calls that you have, you're not going to have to send that engine out. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it, it's, it and makes total sense. Rusty, one more thought. We respond on mutual aid to other communities, and we have response from them to help us here in Hampton, and we need to be staffed adequately to take on that responsibility. I totally agree with you, and when, when an ambulance uh, comes in from out of town, which we appreciate our, uh, our neighbors when, when they come and uh, help us when they do that. But that being said, uh, an ambulance call is a revenue maker also. Mm -hmm. And when that ambulance call is done by Northampton or Seabrook or, or Exeter or Portsmouth, whoever, mm -hmm. whoever the ambulance that we need or whoever they get here in time, yeah. that, that revenue is now goes to that community. Right. Yeah. So it could we, come back here. It, where it could come back here if, we had that, if that ambulance was done. Now, that's not saying we're not going to have to have uh, uh, mutual aid ambulances because there are many times that we have two, three, yep. four, five ambulance calls at once. Yep. And we still need that mutual aid ambulance. So... Um, you know, mutual aid works wonderful, but 
it would be better off and the citizens are better off protected by our own firefighters. But this is public safety, number Ab one, absolutely. public safety. So anybody else on this article? Nope. Okay, next one I have is, it's the DPW vehicle purchases, article 24. But I'd like to make a comment first before anyone says anything. The concern on this one is one, they like to request the article be redone, but I'll leave that for Public Works, the town manager, to explain. But um, the other concern they had was the 243165 coming out of the unassigned fund balance. Now, I verified my figures with town manager this morning. As these articles are presented right now, the total we have coming from the unassigned fund balance is $591,273. Now, we did not use any money to offset the tax weight, uh, blankly, I would call it, this year. Mm -hmm. And over the past two years, since I've been a selectman, we did a million. And then the last year, I think we did 650000 Yeah. Yeah. So that's about $800,000 a year. Yeah. So this is, you know, drastically less than that. And it's actually going to get used to cover things. A lot of them are public works neglected things that you know if they can get in and we can get use the money to do that it will come from the unassigned fund balance no tax impact when you see that explanation on the warrant means that there is no additional taxes asking to be raised this money for that it's going to be taken for money that already exists from prior year taxes revenues whatever the case may be but i just want to make that clear the, ta the language in the warrant is what's told we can do, I believe, legally. But by saying no tax impact, we mean no new tax impact. But it's just that's the way it's written legally. So that's all I want to say. Yeah, I, as a follow-up to what Regina is saying, I, we should be printing in black type at the bottom of this uh, article, tax impact has already occurred. We need to have that stated e clearly. E either that or no no new tax impact either way yeah, that's so that well, people I, understand that they've already paid for this that's why I, I would rather i'd like to see the tax impact has already occurred so people know well is that, is that dra well actually uh, i don't think dra prescribes a particular form okay. for fiscal notes so yeah. that's actually acceptable. they they did in this particular case on this one yes so what do we want we you re remember that we had an explanation of where the money came from in prior years okay yeah. They ordered us to remove that explanation from the article, but the article would be not approved by the DRA. They improved no tax impact is what they well, that's approved. All that's all they said they wanted in there. Okay. So that's what we put in. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so what else do you have on this article? What do you, is there anything I mean, I, I was asked another one to bring back if the board would consider reconsidering. I don't reconsider my decision. Yeah. Are we still on 24? We're on 24, yeah. Yeah, I have... I would, uh, I would be prepared to move on 24 that we take out the two sidewalk maintenance vehicles and put that in a separate warrant article. There is going to be some feedback or some heat on that. I would just like to see, I think we combined it uh, initially, but I think it is more sensible and I do not want to lose the dump truck. So I would, I would recommend that we do two separate articles, and uh, the Budget Committee may have a little more information on the sidewalk. Is there a vehicles. second for that? Well, it's, you're, it's risking. I don't want to lose that. Well, you, you know, <laughs> and I, I, I think it's risky making more and more and more in articles. I, I, so I, you know, the, well, the, we everybody, did consolidate originally. Right, and every voter I have talked to said, why do we have so many damn Warren oh, articles? I agree. Yeah. And so... I well, think we've worked hard at trying to keeping them down and keeping them precise. Yeah, yeah. I just thought and I I'd think bring the, it up. the voters that I talk to, I, I think, are appreciating that. Yeah, I think so too. So, could uh, I say one thing? Yeah. about I think. Do we know by chance how much those two? I'm sorry, how, I'm how much sure the, uh, the value is? The just two sidewalks the maintenance vehicles would be approximately out of the two hundred forty-three thousand. They're uh, the newer ones are sixty thousand each, fifty-nine and change. So it's like roughly half of them. Yeah. yeah, so two of them is 120. So would that be like at the deliberative session? I mean, are you guys going to, is either you or Deputy Hale going to explain what the cost consists of and yeah. as part of the warrant explanation? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. I think I there think, will be feedback on this well, one. Well, I think there may be, but you know, I think our, our uh, public works director has done a very good job at trying to find out what the costs were. Yeah. He's also done a very good job of explaining them. And if people will listen <coughs> to what our <laughs> officials have to say, then they'll understand what the Warren article is about. You're going to get a bullhorn for the delivery <laughs> session? We may get a bull, but... <laughs> What's uh, next? Uh, I am trying to find, it's the Fund 21. Fund no, 21. it's in the back. Article number. Oh, Article 44. 44. 44. Ooh. Oh, okay. What's wrong with that? Well, I'm not sure, but they want to ask if the selectmen will withdraw it because the village district... This money, was, I'm going to have the town manager explain it, actually, if I may. The money was originally part of a warrant article that was approved um, some years ago, uh, 1996, uh, where funds were, 20% of the funds from the beach parking lots were collected and put into a fund, and the purpose was to do improvements at the beach. Uh, those improvements turned out to be new light, new street lighting, and if you look at A and B Street and part of Ashworth Avenue on that end, you'll see those new lights installed. The beach precinct voted, um, pretty. I'm doing this in recollection now, but I think it was a half a million dollar bond to put in the conduit and the splice boxes where the lights would be mounted uh, in each of the sidewalks yeah. and the new sidewalks that were that. built at the beach on A through Q Streets. They would like this money retained for that purpose. And as you know, two years ago, I did gas the board, and you did put an out warrant article in to spend this money along with some additional money um, to, in fact, do three more streets. So mm -hmm. we'd start working towards Q Street at the other end. Mm -hmm. And the town voted that down severely. Mm -hmm. uh, so that caused this year um, the thought of putting it in the general fund because it's only can't yeah. be used for anything else. So. Yeah. Uh, and it's just sitting there and doing nothing. It's in the treasurer's hands. Um, they would like to continue that program, so they'd like to remove this article and put a new article in next year. In fact, advancing that street lighting situation at the beach. Hmm. This is kicked around for years. Yeah. You're right. In years and years. <clears throat> Decades, anyhow. Yeah. And. Uh, it would be nice um, that they could do it, but you know, did the town ever make a uh, say that they were going to do it? I mean, originally before that warrant article changed everything? I think that uh, the wording in the warrant article was that the Hampton Beach commissioners, along with the town manager and the director of public works, would come up with a program to spend that money. And that program, when I arrived here, was to put the streetlights up. So mm -hmm. that's all that we had ever worked on. And then the article was changed to put the 20% from the parking revenue into park and recreation facilities. So that changed on the way down the, uh, down the road, so the money stopped being accumulated. We did spend, I think, about $175,000 to uh, do A and B streets and part of Ashworth Avenue. Uh, so that's as far as we really did obtain uh, the money and spent it for that purpose. So there's some, some money left over, $41,600 is left over from that fund. How You'd much? have to, $41,600. Mm. You'd have to implement it. Uh, the warrant article we placed in two years ago, I believe, had a total of 150000 The balance was from the unreserved fund balance to start that program up again. But they would. They would like to withdraw the article and try to do that again next year. That's what the beach commissioners had suggested. So withdraw the article about the going to the parks the, and recreation. No, no, no. withdraw the article going spending going to the general fund. Oh. Going to the general fund. I think it's fine as it is. I just, as I say, if it's just sitting there doing nothing, that's foolishness. It has been for quite a number of years. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. it's if it's doing nothing. And if right. it's not going to do anything, and if the Warren article is going to be shot down, why are we, you know, that that's, yeah, that's what I think. Regina, you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a cleanup right now. I think the project down the beach is probably a good idea that it eventually happens, but we could ask for it again yeah. 
by the voters. Right but out, of the, out of the undesignated fund, the whole thing is. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the 41,000 is either going to get moved to unassigned fund balance, which if we decide to do the project again, maybe we could suggest it come from that same fund once again. But this is a cleanup, and I, I guess it's been brought up by the auditors too as to why it's just sitting there. Well, it was mentioned. It was mentioned. It yeah. wasn't part of the report, but it was mentioned. So they the noticed it. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's not like it's going to get spent. It's just going to yeah go so sit in a better spot. Getting some of that, um, getting the money that needs to be gotten, it's possibly uh, a would be a good um, project for the Hampton Beach Area Commission, mm -hmm. maybe to work on. Um, so. Especially where there is some improvements that are supposed to be done, although who knows when that will be. <laughs> um, <laughs> really, will any of us be here? Um, that's probably when it should be done. Yeah. But I think that this would be a good project for the Hampton Beach Area Commission, and there's a meeting on um, June 24th, I believe. And if well I right. get a chance to bring it up, I'll bring it up also okay. there. So is there any interest in removing this warrant article? No. I didn't think so. And then there's just two more I want to bring up sure. for the budget committee level, but I think uh, the town manager is going to be in with finance anyway on Thursday for the final review. And I think with explanations provided by him that maybe we could uh, have the budget committee reconsider their votes on the, I know one we haven't even talked about at this level yet, the American Legion petition warrant article and also the Naval Committee warrant article. I think maybe with town management well, explanation. The Heritage Commission oh. as well. Thank you, Mike. Oh, the Heritage Commission? They, I didn't even realize we voted on that. I was going to well, have about it. Okay. Heritage Commission died on Article 46. Oh, okay. All right, so. I know Jason's here. If it needs to be talked about it, so it was submitted by the Planning Board and the Planning so, Office. So, is there any other articles that we need to discuss? I would like to. I'd like, to, I'd like to paraphrase first as nicely as I can. I've never seen so many experts talk on a certain committee that don't know what they're talking about. I would recommend highly that people research Article 30 on the ADA. Mm -hmm. I did my research on that, and there are many towns that the court has come and said, you will do every sidewalk in town and you will take a billion dollar in Los Angeles bond out and you will do it. It's not when you redo something. It's that everything has to be accessible. So when you're talking about Article 30 and I hear clowns expounding on what they don't know what they're talking about, I think it's foolishness. And I think that, that we voted a recommended 311. But I recommend anybody that voted against it, you, you should do your homework and you should see that there have been small towns and there have been large cities that there's been court action against and they've been forced to do it. That's all I want to say. I just, I heard something about, I'm not exactly sure where, it was on the news this week about um, somewhere they're doing some major work. Be, I think it's because of those fires it was and that they're insisting they do it that way. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mary Louise? Yeah, I opened a preliminary discussion with the planning board at our last meeting. Mark was present on at least having the planning board make a start and require developers who are developing a neighborhood towns are responsible to put the to put the um, sidewalks in the plan. Towns are responsible. Do your homework. What? My question is, what's a hundred thousand dollars going to do again? plan we need a plan for it okay right. just adding money that is not gonna I mean I'm sorry yeah. but the budget I'm my concern with it is the hundred thousand dollars isn't gonna get us anywhere. Right. it's not gonna enough to be one so if anyone comes in and tells us that we got to do all our mm -hmm. sidewalks yeah it's hundred thousand dollars being there is not gonna do anything yeah. for us you have a start then you then at least somebody's probably not gonna come into you they're gonna it's up to you guys I mean I don't care I think the developers should be forced to put Chris? You got any well, on the on the, a list of what you would? We do have a sidewalk list. We do. Um, we have it, and, and it was along with that a rating system. Uh, the plan was to, as, for instance, this summer we're hoping to get Lafayette Road resurfaced, mm -hmm. the drainage done. The sidewalks would be done at the same time. The hope was that 
as we approach, let's say, the Winnicott Road projects and High Street Road projects that this asphalt money, the resurfacing money would come out of the asphalt account, that a portion of the sidewalk money, that work would come out of the uh, sidewalk capital reserve account, sewer from sewer, drainage from drainage. Mm -hmm. And that putting those resources together would allow for a one section to be done completely at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so just like um, with Lafayette Road, like for instance, let's say Lock Road. Lock Road's in for a sewer replacement first. After that happens, then it would be the total resurfacing would get done. And if there was, there's some, but not much, it was probably a bad choice use lock road but those sidewalks would get done so my concern was in putting this together that um, sidewalks would can and should get done with in the scope frame of a larger project mm -hmm. because um, one no contractor just wants to come in and just do 50,000 or even $25,000 worth of sidewalk project we're not finding any con contractors but like for instance, when we just did Ann's Lane, we got some sidewalk work done in concert with that other project. Right. So it was just in an effort to come up with a capital reserve fund to know that we were doing sidewalks and, and that we would follow the plan that's laid, laid out, the street sequence that's laid out within the CIP. That was it. Yeah. As public works director, do you have a problem with new neighborhoods being required by the planning board to have the developers put the sidewalks in. Why should you have to go back? Only the letter. I, the, I would should be under your supervision, I, obviously. I don't have a problem with the planning board's authority to ask for sidewalks, mm -hmm. as long as they're done in accordance with, let's say, a right. sidewalk plan. Right. Because sidewalks, let's say, out on Toll Farm Road uh, that lead people out to Mary Batchelder, for instance, um, don't accomplish much because they leave people. In other words, there has to be a systematic plan, yes. one sidewalk connected to another. Yes. The other consequence that I would ask that as people do that, they consider, I think reasonable people expect that if the developers built the sidewalks, the town will clear them. Yeah. And this goes back to the two sidewalk tractors that we were discussing five minutes ago without the proper equipment and or the prop, the manpower trained right. to use that equipment, that right. won't get done. So it's a... But, but if you're building these sidewalks, you're building them in the town right of way. Correct. So that automatically gives you, and I had a discussion about this, several discussions with Jason, that means that you own it once the developer turns it over and it would be subject to whatever you need to do Correct, right. and, first, and, all, and all, the new, all the new projects have done that. For yeah. instance, like when the dentist yeah. went in on uh, Lafayette Road, so he put you, in the new sidewalks himself and he put in the handicap ramp. So wouldn't you it's rather have a contractor put in the sidewalk to your specifications? The planning board should know what specifications there are. But it, it all depends on where the property is. Correct. Well, wait a well, it, it, it all well, depends on where the property is. But if how you're does that relate to the generic that Jim just discussed, that everybody's going to have sidewalks? It, no, no, he, he, said it, say he that. did not say that. He said that where you do have sidewalks, they have to be accessible. They have to be accessible. That's what he said. So mm -hmm. you cross now, the street and step up on the sidewalk. So if you, <coughs> well, if you can't step up on a sidewalk and it's not accessible, <laughs> that, that's the problem. Yeah. There lies the problem. But as as Chris was alluding to, we, you know we have some places out on Mary Batchelder Road. You can't just blanketly say, you know, you have to put sidewalks in because if that's a sidewalk to nowhere, and it doesn't connect to another sidewalk, well, what's the sense in putting it in? But you have plenty of those. You have plenty of areas where, where there are no sidewalks at all, so you that, don't have to worry about hooking them up. Well, that's what you were just saying. You want that all planning things they have to include sidewalks well if we have to have and, sidewalks and that's everywhere. not and that's you don't have to have sidewalks everywhere well i i don't get what you're trying to do i have a piece of property in florida where <clears throat> yeah. i bought it 18 years ago and when i bought it um and it's in a community of 600 house houses so it's mm -hmm. a big um development um when you bought the property you had to put the sidewalks in 
Yeah. Even though I, I'm just, you know, just now, 18 years later, I'm getting around to building the house. I had to buy the side. I had to put the sidewalks in 18 well, years that, ago. That was probably part of your, your community. It was part yes. of the community, but it's not. But and that works down in Florida. Yeah, because we don't get that. We don't get that size communities around here. Yeah. Right. We're we're we you know planning board. You're getting one, two, five, maybe ten house lots now. We're not getting mm -hmm. anything bigger than that. Yeah. And so you can't require somebody to put a sidewalk on a on a on a little three house or four house dead end street that yeah. doesn't have any sidewalks to go out to. Well, so I, I have no, I, I still have no uh, uh, motivation to vote, to vote for Article 30. I think it's ridiculous. My only say is do your homework. Research. Virginia. I did my homework and the Mace Road sidewalk that was suggested by last year Okay, it? that's that's the kind of side. That's a town sidewalk. It's not one A. It's not state property. Yeah, it's a town sidewalk. Yeah, private petition. The estimate for that was five hundred something yes. thousand dollars. Baloney okay, on that. so yeah, I definitely think we should have a capital reserve fund, but start in, and I think we need to work on it, and I think we need to work toward having those types of roads that connect neighborhoods and neighborhoods of families and kids that walk to school every day want a Connett Road takes you to every possible school in this town takes you to the library you know takes you everywhere doesn't even have Bailey has sidewalks it's been like that for as long as I can remember hmm. but yes capital reserve fund great idea be proactive about it but I mean it's just like this stuff gets thrown in at the last minute and we're asking the voters to approve something else like, let's explain this to them, and then let's maybe next year say, you know what, let's put a half a million mm. into the capital mm. reserve fund for sidewalks, because that's actually going to accomplish something. Like, right. how much do you think for the 1A project, just fixing that part of the sidewalks? Is there, like, an estimate on how much that would cost? 1A? I'm not 1A. I'm sorry. Left Wait, oh. Wait the, you know, where we just replaced the soil line. That whole project's going to start up again in the spring, right? There's usually a hundred thousand dollars worth of work there, for right. both sides, the full length. Right. Easily. And the, I, the only other point to bring up is I also sit on the uh, TAC committee, and this year because Hampton wasn't um, in the running for a uh, TAP grant or a transportation improvement grant, okay. um, it was interesting to sit on that side and see how the projects got rated, yeah. but communities that had. Uh, capital reserve funds and planned programs mm -hmm. like Newcastle, like Portsmouth, like uh, Exeter did, um, they were received more favorably. They earned more points. They came higher up in the rating system. So um, a capital reserve fund is looked at as a commitment by the town that should the funds be granted, i.e., by the through mm -hmm. the state DOT and the regional planning commission that the town has a mechanism for getting that work done that's all so would you say i know there was some talk about someone coming in and help us redoing one kind of road but i haven't heard anything about that lately one of the okay. planning commissions that's the the safe road development to that safe road to when it when a kind of road in its entirety has, uh, has been on the 10-year plan for right. dot for 10 years safe right. roads to school <clears throat> right in safe roads routes to school that was the but I thought I remember heard something about 19 something happening but obviously there is a the, the regional planning commission the RPC is is uh, sponsoring an article to redo Winnicott Road or a portion of it a section mm -hmm. total it's to, been uh, going on no for road. yeah right so would you argue as public works director for the town of Hampton that uh, having this capital reserve fund set up this year would increase our I just don't want like if this is going to be set up I would like to see it grow I would agree. so that it gets to something that can no. actually use to accomplish a project like Mason I would agree. it wouldn't be spent willy-nilly on 50 feet here and 75 feet there and 30 feet mm -hmm. there we're talking a capital improvement project ie some significant sections of sidewalk done in coordination because that's the only way one that we're going to get them done at a reasonable cost and, and, and that it'll be noticeable. But it'll also be done in concert with road work and other things like that. And if you had money um, that was put aside, 
then you could ask for less money from the public when you put it on as a future warrant article. Like, you, let's say you had right. $300,000 and you need right. 600000 you'd only have to ask for 300000 right. But I think one reason why there's such an aversion to the sidewalks is because, look at the state, has... Well, yeah. uh, you, you mentioned 1A, <laughs> and as long as they, they we will be dead before they right do now. anything. Yeah. I had to drive through a, a, a hole to get here tonight. Right. Uh, that <laughs> I what, know you did. Where does the people go on, in wheelchairs? <laughs> they go in the middle of the road. It's disgusting that the state doesn't step up. And they're supposed, you know, we're trying to, but I don't, you know, it just doesn't happen. And that's why it's hard to get the, the, people that live here in Hampton to want to do it My when they see the state not even I just would it. like to see this grow to something that it can be used to accomplish a road like Mace Road or Wanaconnet or some major road that kids Absolutely. are traveling on especially yeah. too. Um, this, this is all interesting but Rick if we have a capital reserve fund or you say we need to raise extra in another year it's all public money whichever way you cut it it's all coming out of the taxpayers' pockets, whether you take it out like this or you ask them for extra <coughs> funds in the future. And next, next concept that I that concerns me: try going into Mace Road or some of the old neighborhoods and cutting up the people's front lawns and taking out their Well, I think walls. they should do it. Well, you're going to you have. You live right on a perfect street where people take advantage. You're going to have a revolution. Yeah, they've got. Uh, there's more. Uh, uh, stakes and stuff like that. I went to a party over there. I couldn't believe what the people are getting away with on your street. And it's a right across from your house. And it's partly because <laughs> of the right of way. And we we do have a right of way, and it is a town's right of way. Well, and, and it we looks to beautiful those, too. But they think it's their front yard. Right. 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 But I'd like I, to put a sidewalk I, right there that went to nowhere. No. I still think we. <laughs> I still think we need to ha have. We have to start someplace. And if it, as we heard from the public works no. director, if it's our ability to at least get better recognition for maybe possible grant money, uh, I think, uh, again, maybe the budget committee doesn't like the word grants, but I think if we go after that, it certainly helps out our taxpayers and we, and we get done with the stuff that we need to do in this town. So. I would be willing to, I think I abstained from this earlier, I would be willing to uh, reconsider to a yes vote to agree with the Board of Selectmen, but like I said, very important that this grow to something that it can be used to fix a larger problem and not just a small section of town. Thank you. So we have somebody that's willing to... I'll make a motion that we reconsider. All right. I'll second that. So the, the vote would be to recommend this by the Board of Selectmen or to not recommend it. All those in favor? No. Oh, just to reconsider. No, vote. To well, that's what I'm trying to you got This, you is, a, this will okay, be a yet. Reconsider, yeah. This is a, all right, a motion to reconsider. All right, so yeah. you reconsider it? Yeah. All right. All right. And so now the motion that we approve it. Approve it. There's a motion to approve it. I will second that. I'm Sorry. opposed. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, my discussion. Four, one opposed. Okay. So we can change that now it's from three, one, and one to four, four, one, and zero. Are there any other warrant articles that you want to? Oh, the Heritage Commission. Can we talk about that one so Jason can explain? What number is that? It's uh, 46. 46. Okay. Yeah, um, especially since we haven't talked about it yet. Oh, good. Okay. So the uh, planning board has been talking for some months now about, about the possibility of uh, reestablishing the Heritage Commission. Uh, and um, that's, you know, back in 2015, as I understand it, Article 35 abolished mm -hmm. right. the prior existing Heritage Commission. Um, kind of just when I was getting here, but my understanding was <laughs> it wasn't very active and right. certain things weren't occurring. But... You know, recent projects, I guess, that the planning board has seen involving uh, potential historic or cultural resources has generated a renewed interest in looking at, at this article. Yeah. Um, so what you have before you is um, an article uh, proposing um, to establish a heritage commission. It says, as proposed by the planning board. Um, this article outlines the advisory and re review authority of a heritage commission um, as in RSA 67044B, 
Um, I'll just touch upon a few of the items in here. They're all pretty clearly spelled out in here. But some things that the Heritage Commission may do if, if reestablished would be the survey and inventory cultural resources, um, assist the planning board with the master plan process, which hopefully will be starting soon, mm -hmm. um, advise um, upon request local agencies and other boards on their review of cultural historic resources or matters affecting those resources, um, hiring consultants and contractors as needed for the purpose of such reviews. Um, holding meetings, um, they might even have the opportunity to receive gifts of money and property, um, real and personal, um, for the purpose of, of historic and cultural resource preservation. So it's something the board's been talking about. It's, it's been on the minds of some, the vote, they took a recommendation, a vote to recommend it was 6-1, just so that you know. Um, so it is uh, pretty broadly supported by the board and uh, have any questions on it? I'd Rick? like to. I was on the last um, Heritage Commission, and are you aware of why it disbanded? I don't know every detail there about was it. No one that wanted to be on it. That's what, I, well, that's what I was after saying. After year heard. after year. And uh, the same old people showed up. Some of them died, some of them moved away. <laughs> uh, but there was never any, we barely ever had any people at them. Sure. At the meetings. There was very little interest. No one wanted to hear from them. The people that were hard workers, like Elizabeth Ack mm -hmm. Ackroyd, oh, yeah. um, she finally, I, I believe, gave it up. Um, you need to, I think that in order for something like this to really happen, you have to think of a way of how you're gonna get people that are gonna be interested and to be there. Right, well, well the thought is, I mean, we've seen, for example, we did see a subdivision recently uh, in town that, that involved a house from yeah. 1799. And everyone complained about it, but they would and probably be coming to the meetings. Right. Well, it was, it, was a, it was a very major topic. It's something that even the planning office brought up early in, and the building department brought up early in the process, you know, is there things we can do to save this house? So, I mean, it, it's on the board's mind. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's, it's, yeah. it's before the vo voters th to consider reestablishing it. Um, you know, and, and hopefully there is interest that people yeah. would, would participate. I think I could imagine there's at least one or two members of the board that would probably be interested. In, yeah. Uh, Fred Rice was another one that was a long right. time um, uh, person. And the guy that yeah. used to do the headstones. Um, Cypress. Yeah, yeah, Cypress. Cypress, yeah. he was there. June Bean, another yeah. one. But there slowly was just no interest in it. Unfortunately. Well, if we don't get this passed, we'll never know. So I'd like to. I think if it passes, we can get interest in it. Yeah. One thing I do want to note, though, is in the article itself, there is a, something that should be added to the language here. The part was this per RSA 674-44B Roman 3. It says the Heritage Commission also may assume, if authorized, should say if later authorized by the Board of Selectmen, the compositions and duties of a historic district commission. So. Before the word authorized, I would insert the word later. The last, I, you see that in your? Uh, yeah, Roman number three. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, yes, yeah. On oh, my article, it's a little bit, I have the draft, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So yeah, Roman three, Historic District Commission, Heritage Commissions also may assume if later authorized by the local legislative body. Yep, so the, add the word later before authorized. Excellent. Yeah, there, there is actually uh, another point, which is uh, under Roman 3, it talks about, as provided in RSA 673 colon 4 hyphen small a, the Heritage Commission shall, and I know Jason is quoting from the statute, but Roman 1 talks about the legislative body prescribing the way the members are to be appointed, but that would delay you a year mm -hmm. because it doesn't say... It, it, the voters aren't voting how to do it. Right. No. You, you may want to insert something that, that, that established. This was that. one of the committees or commissions that um, had a selectman's representative. I believe I was the selectman's mm -hmm. representative at the end. Right. And that's a good idea. That, that would be yeah. in Roman 2. So you got one who's a selectman's member. Another may be a member of the planning board. Yeah. So that would be two out of the. Uh, Two mm -hmm. out of the three, yeah. or not more than seven. So they'd want to prescribe how to appoint yeah, the others. Yeah, I think others. if you had, if, you know, that yeah. that was, you know, that would help maybe 
the board of selectmen could try to get people the planning board could try to get people but that was the big problem it just wasn't mm -hmm. the people right? yeah it was also at the time when it was the just the uh main part of the recession and there wasn't much happening too sure. right mm -hmm. so okay. yeah and i, and I um, thank jason for his work do you want to amend it to to the yeah add the language add the language that Jason has said and also the council council has said yes you got to you got to establish how the membership is going to be selected as well why don't you make that amendment tomorrow and bring it to us tomorrow good. night so that Excellent. we can do it tomorrow yeah. night yeah. that way we're not trying to do something off the cuff mm -hmm. that's okay. good. very good all right I'm gonna need to so we'll bring that up tomorrow night any other um, article 48 veterans service grave markers on petition of G Berkeley Bennett and at least 25 registered voters shall the town raise an appropriate should it, should it be the shall the town vote to raise an appropriate no, either one is lawful but okay $6,500 to reimburse the Hampton Hamptons American Legion post 35 for the purchase of 200 bronze service flag holder grave markers the American Legion Posts would place the markers on the properly honored of the graves of our veterans in the High Street Cemetery, which are currently missing service flag holders. Why are we missing flag holders? Who's in charge of them? It's hmm. a good question. Uh, the American Legion has been adding them slowly over the years. Yeah. They, they have a complete list. Um, I've noticed in the last two years that they have been submitting bills to the town. We don't have anything in the budget that allows us to do that, so we've been taking it out of the flag account, Ooh. which is a patriotic purposes. Yeah. And um, I did uh, send a letter to the uh, the commander, Mr. Bennett, um, indicating that uh, if they're going to do something, they should they should do it. But we don't have an appropriation for it, so mm. they need to do something about it. They submitted a warrant article to get it done. They know where all the graves are. They know who needs to be marked, and they know which flags need to be put up. But in the future, they <coughs> need to know where all those markers are, so they're not having to. Look. Well, they, they 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 know where all the graves are. So what they do is they want to put the markers up that are missing that have never been put up before. Right. And and because right now they're just sticking the flags in the ground. Right. And and they should go on a holder. Yeah. So they can be displayed properly. But somebody needs to keep track of them. I don't know if they leave them in there in the winter or whatever. They eliminate year round. Time. Yeah, but if you've got so many missing, yeah. well, then you or, have or to they spend were never put in beforehand. They may not be missing. They just may have yeah. never been there. The thought is that they were never put in. So as people are being buried and the veterans are being buried, nobody's bothering with the flag mar uh, holder. That's and something that's that the American Legion now wants to do, but they have to catch up. It would have been nice if they had been doing this all along, so well, you don't need $6,500 to do markers. No, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve this. I'll second it. Any other? All those in favor? I'm going to abstain. For one abstention. Are you through with your Is there any more, stuff? Regina? You got more? Um, I just wanted to just verify next week we have Aquarian coming in. Uh, and then also uh, Representative Mesmer. I just wanted to make sure that I think it would be really good if we have them on the same night with all this stuff that I know uh, our senator is working on with PFAS, and I know he's working closely with Mindy Mesmer. So I thought that uh, if Aquarian was going to be here, I'd like to have Mindy in on the same night, and she is available. Good. She was on the news the other night. I don't know if you saw it. That's it's fine by me. Yeah. So. All right. I have another article if, if uh, Regina is done. I'm so done. You've got all three of your articles? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were just on the whole business. You all okay. set? Yep. Okay. Article 27. Purchase ejection trash trailer. I assume later on this evening we're going to go and... Um, uh, Mr. Jacobs is here, uh, and the uh, C&D contract for hauling and equipment. Is that the contract that's going to start on the 11th of January? So what yes. does that have to do with the article? Well, what it has to do with the article, it says that in item three, 
um, re-energy. Uh, I moved to enter into a one-year contract with re-energy for the disposal of construction and demolition waste. Wait a minute. What's that have to do with the... Well, I'm getting to it. <laughs> At the tipping cost of $70 per ton with the hauling cost of $320 per haul and with re-energies supplying the town with one trailer at Public Works with no rental fee for purposes of enabling this disposal. I recommend that we pull Article 27. That will make the seventh trailer and that apparently is part of, the, um, part of the agreement. The ejection trailer that's the Warren article yeah. is uh, set up to address the issue that during the major holidays we yeah. don't have sufficient capacity right. to handle refuse and recycling waste. Mm -hmm. The C and D waste is its own separate contract, its own separate waste stream. What are we doing with it now? Right. We Triano out of South Portland, Maine was picking it up at $85 a ton and for $450 a haul and hauling construction and demolition waste up to South Portland. How are they hauling it? So this is construction. With their own trailer. With their truck. So, these, so this these, is the same as the Troiano no. agreement as far as. But these are two different type of trailers, correct? Correct. Yes. The yes. type of trailer okay, that we're well asking why. for under the Warren article is not a ejection top on it. And it's an yeah. a, it's, so it's a totally enclosed trailer and it uses yeah. an injection, ejection yeah. Pusher okay. to push the waste out. So, so I understand yeah. now. So the Troiano trailer right. and the Reenergy trailer are separate, a type of trailer. So totally, they were trailers. open top. Other than this right. one. Correct. Okay. Yes. Well, two that separate, clarifies it. Thank two, you. Two separate races. <laughs> but I thought I'd ask. Any other Warren articles? Um, not that I can. Now, what time is the meeting tomorrow? Five o'clock. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to be here. Okay. Jim, you can't be here either? Yes. Hopefully three. three. I can be here. Yeah, I can be here. Well, that's three. And, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump over the nope. Warren article discussion. Nope, that, that was, was fine. Good. I just wanted to make sure we <laughs> All right. Is there any other Warren articles that want to be brought up? I have this stuff all marked up. I don't see any more. Okay. Seeing none, the revi 1018. Uh, 1,088 revised bond amount of $17,000 approval. That's Ocean Boulevard. That's Ocean Boulevard, 17, I mean 1088 Ocean Boulevard, correct? correct. Yes, I just want to speak to this one sure. briefly. Um, so previously you had, uh, the board had um, approved a bond amount of $35,000 for this property. This is the 1088 Ocean Boulevard property where they had before the planning board a subdivision to subdivide the existing condominium right. into two lots. and and to revise the condominium accordingly. Um, the purpose of that bond was the relocation of Unit 9 and onto the private property. Part of it was in the state right away and then the removal and relocation of encroachments per condition number three of the planning board's approval. Wow. Um, in, in approving that $35,000 amount, the, the applicant did not prepare a detailed cost estimate. <laughs> so DPW and CMA in the review said, well, if they're not gonna provide that, we think $35,000 is appropriate. They couldn't get the bonding subsequently in that amount. So they did provide a more detailed cost estimate and the amount they came back with was $17,000. Is that approved? Is that and that's, and that's been reviewed by works. Jen and DPW and by uh, Jody at CMA. Right. So we are fine with that amount. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Oh, good. There you go. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, Jason. You. Any other old business? My goodness. New business, dedication of the town report. Sir. I believe you had a recommendation from uh, staff with regards to the dedication of the report. Too much paper. Um, you had three suggested names, uh, Nancy Stiles, Dinah Martin, and Uta Punio, um, to dedicate the report to. I'll make a motion to include um, Bill Hartley. And Bill yes, Hartley. I'll second. I'll second. Oh. Okay. Okay. Do yeah. we? I mean, you had a second recommendation for Bill Hartley and Sandy yeah. Buck. And Sandy Buck. So, but uh, I just don't want to have a thing where we're, we're having a dedication for people that have passed. 
and people that are, are still here. Right. That, those were the names that were mentioned. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, it's up to the board to make, make a decision on whether you're going to do dedications or memorials or dedications and memorials. Can so we I, do both? Yes, yeah, we can. We oh, both? certainly we do both. Well, maybe we can do a dedication um, and a memorial page. Yeah. Good. Uh, I, I think that's more appropriate. I, I, I just agree. thought they, they should be separate. Sam, I'll make yeah. that motion that we have a memorial page. Second. All right. All right, and, and, and Bill and Sandy. Well, we also have wait, Brian wait. Latham. Oh, wait, good. Wait, wait, yep. wait. Yes, Latham. Latham. There was a motion to have a, a page. Right. Uh, second, so now we got to vote on that. Okay, motion. so the Don't motion we... to have a memorial page. Second, all those in favor? Yep. Fine. Now, discuss who's going to be on the memorial page. We have Bill Hartley. And Sandy Buck. Sandy Buck. And Brian, Brian Latham. Latham. Yeah. And we also have Nancy Waddell. Nancy Waddell, excellent. Mm -hmm. Who have all been yep. contributors contributed to, the town. to this town. Excellent. We also I'll make a motion, Sandy Buck. Well, why don't we do what about, four of them? Was June Bean on it last year? Uh, I don't remember. I don't believe remember. if June Bean was on it last she didn't, she, When did she pass? This year? Me, I believe it was this year. Wasn't it? Yes. It was this year. And, and I'll tell you, she was a, like I said, she was on the Heritage Commission. Yeah. In 2018. And she, uh, I believe she that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. took a lot of pride in doing the t yeah. uh, Work for the town of Hampton. Yeah. I believe well, these these are the recommendations that, that had come into us. Right. When do we so have to have we, this by? Well, sooner the better. But I know Christine is working, uh, and I believe that her name's, just her name's on the memorial page as well. Anybody that was a town official mm -hmm. that has passed, or a provider to the town that has passed, uh, a volunteer to the town that's passed, that, that you know, yeah, work for the town. We put them on the on the memorial page. Mm -hmm. uh, but you always approve having a memorial page, so that's why we're, mm -hmm. we're asking to have one. Uh, and that list sometimes gets quite long. Last year be. it was very well, long. That's okay. I just don't want to. I don't want to miss anybody either. Right. right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I think. So you're saying put multiple names on the memorial. Page. Yes. Yeah. We usually try okay. to put all those who yes. are past officials who are past and, and are no longer with us. Uh, for one reason year. or another, so we put them all on that one page, and yeah. or it could be two or three pages, depending on how many there are. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I think yeah. Nancy Waddell is a good, another good example. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, but I just want to uh, see if we can go back and check our records to make sure that we haven't forgotten anybody. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're doing. God forbid we we forget something. Oh. Yeah. But I think as it's far as so we'll have the memorial page with with multiple names. Multiple, multiple names. names. Now the dedication page. To the three ladies. To the that three you, ladies that were mentioned, which was yeah. Diana Martin, Nancy Uta, Styles, Nancy Styles, and, Styles. and I'll make and that Uta motion. Uta I'll second. Yeah. For all three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. All those in favor? Fine. Unanimous. Okay. Nice. Good. So that way they were, we're honoring the people that yep. have passed, right. and we're honoring yep. the That's people nice. that have um, right. done a lot for their community while they're still here. It's a good thing. Nice. So. C and D contract for hauling and equipment. Construction and demolition. Construction and demolition. M mutually inconsistent terms. <laughs> <laughs> Julie demolition and construction. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I was before you before um, a number of months ago, just asking basically to. Um, because I tried to find a solution for C and D waste. Um, when it went up from what we were paying about $45 a ton to uh, $85 a ton, and then the hauling cost went from $300 to $450. Uh, you know, I, I, I assume and presume that as the director, you want me to turn over leaves and lift stones and look on corners for other means and methods. Um, we did find another means and methods, and that's ERCO. Uh, it stands for energy resource. Uh, they're basically going to use the C and D demo as fuel uh, in their parent corporation with ReEnergy. At the time I was with you before, um, in reviewing the contract that we had with Triano, it was a did not have a severance clause within the contract. I spoke directly with the operations manager, and um, they could see their way of backing out of the contract. They had other uh, workloads that they could satisfy with that equipment, um, it wasn't what, uh, it wasn't a deal breaker for them. So they uh, nicely um, agreed to end their service 
uh, the last day of December. So we're out of the contract with Triano. We're going to make it official with a uh, more formal document that uh, town uh, legal has put together. But uh, we're essentially out of that contract. And they, in effect, their trailer they pulled out uh, late in the afternoon on December 31st. So um, we are just waiting for an official contract and the appropriate assurances and, and bonding. And I'll turn it over to Mark. And so if the board chooses to, uh, the, uh, the contract with Triano was to last till July 1 of, of uh, this year. And so the thought is uh, to go with a one year for starting January 10th and then to uh, reassess then what, what I, uh, I think as of this time next year, <coughs> we will have rebid it and know that we're, you know, we had multiple people look at it, so that's why it's a one year. Right. Right. Uh, there is, however, a limited number of potential bidders, uh, and that's that is one reason why the uh, waiver of the competitive bidding at this point uh -huh. would be appropriate. Right. Okay. And so it's actually three separate motions. Uh, I've given the board those three. One would be to withdraw from the contract with Triano, uh, contingent upon there being no cost associated with the withdrawal. Uh, the second motion would be to waive the requirement of competitive bidding uh, with regard to construction of demolition waste. And the third would be to enter into a one-year contract with ReEnergy for the disposal at the tipping cost of $70 per ton mm -hmm. with a hauling cost of $320 per haul with ReEnergy supplying the town with one trailer at Public Works with no rental fee to enable the disposal. So those would be the three different concepts. Any Mr. Chairman, questions? will you accept a motion for those three items together or do you want them one by one? I think you want some. Uh, how, do you want them one by one or do you want um, them? It's, it's fine if they were all together as long as the board is uh, I have a question. Clear. We have the information, yeah. About the second one, it says uh, contingent upon there being no cost associated with such withdrawal. Do we already know that's the case? or They were happy to come pick up their trailer okay. and um, all right. We left on very amicable terms um, with the full knowledge Good. that they're going to bid on the service. Okay, yeah, saving quite a bit of money going yes. over to them. So they understood I'm what? trying to make all three motions. All right, so I have a motion second. and a second to the. Just discussion for me? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting now, Isn't this the same kind of contract we get in trouble a couple of years ago with the. that, that we didn't bid it properly? Remember, we had to go back and reopen? Uh, that had to do with the. Uh, a, uh, the uh, other waste streams okay and that was one where instead of st bidding it at the outset ourselves or waiving the bidding at the outset ourselves we were cabbaging on to another entity's bid oh. which had its own inherent problems so we're this is not the same okay issue. we're absolutely sure that we're legal nobody's gonna come yeah. back and say this yeah. didn't go right Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. This is clean, in other words. Yes. This okay. is as clean this, as waste can be. Uh, as yeah, right. <laughs> I think the rationale, <laughs> just to answer your question, the rationale comes into play in that there are very few entities that provide this particular right. waste stream. And, and the one that was uh, complained about our procedure last time is not one of those, I take it. Okay. Correct. Good. Any other questions? So we have a motion and, accept, and second to accept the three, the three motions as one. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, good, good. Proposed sewer fees. Mr. Chairman, uh, annually we look at sewer fees and, and at prior direction of the Board of Selectmen and the sewer commissioners. And uh, the department has analyzed their costs and would propose the following increases in fees for septage fees. That's the tipping of septage at the wastewater treatment plant. For Hampton residents, it's currently current for zero to 1,000 gallons, it's currently $35. It's proposed to be 40. For out of town residents, it's $80, it's proposed to be 90. Mm -hmm. For 1,100 uh, 1, gallons to 1,500 gallons, it's currently 5250 for Hampton residents. It's proposed to be $60. Yeah. For non-residents, it's a, uh, currently 120. It's proposed to be 130. Right. 
for 1,501 to 2,000 gallons, uh, currently for Hampton residents is $70, proposed to be $80. Mm -hmm. For out of town residents, it's proposed to be 160, it's currently 160, proposed to be 170. Mm. For 2,100 to, to 2,500 gallons, it's currently 87.50, proposed to be 100. For out of town residents, it's currently 200, proposed to be 210. For 2,501 to 3,000 gallons, that's $105 for Hampton residents. Out of town is 240. Uh, currently, those charges would be 110 and 250, respectfully. For 3,000 uh, and one gallons plus in five, 500 gallon increments, um, the cost for a Hampton resident is $122.50. It would be $120. For an out of town, it would be 200, it's currently 280, would currently be 290. For less than 150 gallons for campers, recreational vehicles, carpet cleaning services, etc., it's currently $3. It's proposed to be $5. And for out of town residents, it's currently $450. It's proposed to be $10. Good. For current disposal fees, for sewer disconnection fee, $50, proposed to stay at $50. Sewer connection fee is $300, proposed to stay at $300. Mm. The sewer re inspections fee, there currently is none, it's proposed to be $125. Yes. For the wastewater system development charge, it's currently $5.32 per gallon, it is proposed to be $6.32 per gallon. And then for flow and strength charges, for um, let's see, for BODs, uh, it's currently, this would be for 288 to 249 milligrams per <laughs> liter. It's, it's one, $100 per 100 pounds per day. For TSS, which is 238 to 693 milligrams per liter, it's currently $100. It's proposed to be $100 per day. And for pH, 6.5 to 10, $1,000 per day. Wow. That's enough. <laughs> I'll make that motion. I'll second. <sighs> I think so. one reason why I quick to make the motion is that I think those are modest increases. Yeah. And I think people should be encouraged to do that rather That's than true. dumping it in the Taylor River. That's true. I agree with that 100%. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Next thing we have is the reconstruction of the Hampton River Bridge property taking discussion. Mr. Chairman, since I sit on this, <clears throat> this commission um, representing the town and the board, uh, one of the proposals that was made at the, one of the last meetings was to increase the height of the bridge to slightly more than 40 feet in height, which is if you look at the control tower that's there now for the lifting of the, of the, uh, the, the bridge opening, uh, that would be about 10 feet above the top of that for height. In doing that, there would have to be four houses taken down in Hampton on the uh, Sun Valley side. Uh, that would be a loss of $2,167,200 worth of valuation. Seabrook has two additional houses that they would have to take down. And uh, the road that uh, serves from Eisenhower to Portsmouth Avenue would have to be completely rebuilt and repositioned. Um, there are alternatives to that, obviously, but they would have to build gigantic retaining walls mm. on that side of the bridge. This is kicking the bridge as far west as they can get it. Mm -hmm. um, right. The area that's to the west has 13 um, types of vegetation or animals that are endangered, so they can't take too much of that property either. Uh, if you want to read the, uh, the dredging formula, it's all in there as well, which, which particular things are endangered. Uh, my question is, and since, since I'm the one who has to vote, uh, my recommendation, along with all the other members of the committee, do the selectmen want to consider or approve the taking of those four, those four structures, the demolition of them, and the filling of that area on a long, gradual slope to remove the properties? And there'd be two in, in Seabrook that are taken as well. Mm. I'd like to ask a question. Sir, go ahead. Um, 
So is Hampton responsible for any of the price of this bridge? No, the state is going to build the bridge. Um, the only thing that we lose is property values. Mm. Yeah, well, I ask, uh, how are we going to get that money back? Um, I, we're not. No. And I think that this is another good reason about the room and meals tax or however you want to bring it up, but I don't see taking that money away from the town of Hampton. I think that we have to look at this in a much broader way. Uh, a good example is this Shell station up here. We, everybody wants to get rid of it, mm -hmm. but that is a piece of, uh, it's like an annuity to the town of Hampton in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. That it, I think that that should be sold to somebody like the bank right next door or whoever else, because why should we lose that money? And then if you go even further and look at what might happen in the future, uh, like for instance, um, and this is why it's really important to be paying attention to what's being done at the Conservation Commission. And because um, when you consider the, what the recommendations of FEMA, which eventually when houses end up being, I don't know, they have some type of a formula. Uh, when it's flooded what, more than two times or something, I'm not sure what it is, mm -hmm. but eventually FEMA pays, I believe, half, and I believe they expect the town to pay half, if I'm not wrong, I might be wrong, um, but the bigger problem is that uh, money that's going to the taxes. I mean, we have to take these things into consideration. Mm -hmm. This is something that can spiral out of control it raises everybody's taxes all over the town. You know, do they, are, how concerned are they about, uh, you know, there's a lot of good reasons why we need a new bridge, but does it benefit the people that live over in Rusty's neighborhood? Do they want to lose all that tax money that could be paying for uh, sewer for that part of town. I mean, you can just look at this, and this just goes on and on and on. And um, New Hampshire is a, uh, particularly a place that is not famous for taking away property to begin with, but why should the town have to do it when it's a, uh, a project that belongs to the bridge, I mean, to the state? Mm -hmm. Rusty, may I? Yep. What options are there? Several. Yeah. One is to replace the bridge in kind and therefore the bridge would not be raised and these properties would not be lost. Uh, another would be to build gigantic retaining walls on the east side of the bridge construction. Don't know how big they would be, but they would be very sizable mm. in order to hold back the amount of material that's behind it. Mm -hmm. And that would increase the cost of the bridge exponentially. The state doesn't wish to do that, of course, because they don't have the money to do that. Mm -hmm. nor can they probably get federal money to do it. So those are the two obvious things that could be done uh, to either eliminate, to both, in both cases it would be eliminate the destruction of these four pieces of property, actually six because Seabrook has two as well. Mm -hmm. uh, short of that, these properties are going to be taken by forced eminent domain mm -hmm. and the people are going to have to relocate um, and build new housing or buy new housing. Okay. Mm -hmm. if they take it by, if they decide to do eminent domain, do we have any option in stopping it? Not really. No. Okay. Okay. So, so I mean, we got to look at all those. I mean, I agree 100% taking the property, losing them, but we got to look at all the options and what's there and what's not there yeah. and how we're going to address it. It boils down to whether or not you have a bridge that opens or you have a bridge that does not open. Mm. Right. The proposal that they're making is for a 40 plus foot high bridge yep. does not open. Yeah. There is no opening on the bridge at all. Thank heaven. So that's the offset to this. Um, but it does lose four pieces of property for the town. And, yeah. and exactly two, where is almost the property? Almost $2.2 .2 million worth of property value. Yeah, where's the property? It's, the, it's on the east side. Portsmouth uh, Ave. Uh, it's, on, it's, it's at the end of Portsmouth Ave. It's yeah. the last four properties down. Yeah. One of them's one house away from the river, I yeah. believe. Yeah, it was and just built. Yes, it's a brand new house. Right. And they're not exactly turning on the afterburners to get the bridge built. It probably won't be built till about 2024. 
That's true. Okay. What's and, the, and this this property would be much more valuable by that yeah. time. I understand the rationale for a yeah. higher bridge. Right. Yes. How much how much boat traffic? How much fisher fisherman traffic? How much traffic goes in and out of the harbor every day a that lot. would be affected? A lot. And how much traffic coming into Hampton would be affected by the opening closing of the bridge? I mean, there are several boats in in both harbors that require the bridge to be open at high tide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and there is there are a couple that require to be open at low tide. So uh, we're talking those particular vessels going in and out. One of the suggestions had been, and they're currently using that, this suggestion, is to schedule the time the boats go out so they can be raised all mm -hmm. at once and they all go. That makes more sense, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's what uh, they do in Portsmouth. Yes. That was one of the, su and, uh, the suggestions. Years, and that's I, what they're doing now to eliminate this opening and closing because of the current mechanisms. And for years they've been saying that you can't do it because it belongs to the federal government. I mean, I've been in so many meetings th with this over the years, and they said it was impossible to regulate the uh, 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 up and down of the bridge. And I was talking to one of the fishermen just this week, and they said, no, that's not how it works. In Portsmouth they do it. Yeah. At a spe specified it's, time. It's something that is set up with the um, Harbor Command, which is the state, and and the Coast Guard. And once that's established, the bridge will be open at certain times, and that's when you can go in and out. And that's the way it is in it's Florida, like on the around. coastal waterway. There are a lot of towns that have that problem. Yeah. They've solved it that way. Um, I don't see this, the town losing their tax money. I just um, don't. Um, um, I'm just looking for direction on how I should vote. Go ahead. I would say no. Yeah, I'm on the committee as well. Um, number one, the harbor is so <coughs> clogged because of the failure to dredge that harbor. Number two, I never in my life want to see another bascule bridge with that stupid thing that lifts up and down. That bridge was built in 49 and it's a wreck. So I, I hope that they end up with a 40 foot um, high bridge, and by that time, I hope if the harbor has been dredged, there should be sufficient way to for ships and et cetera to get underneath there. But this, the, if trying to build another new bridge like the one now, and you can't, you can't rip down the current bridge. You've got to build build a separate bridge that's away from it. Oh, I understand it, but I mean, I don't understand. They, they spend the, they built, spend $80 million in Portsmouth and the bridge right, goes up exactly. and down. Well, I, can I say something? Yep. This one is awful. I agree with Rick. I don't think having a 40, whatever it is, foot bridge over there, I mean, where is it gonna come down and go up? I mean, it doesn't. No, I mean, like where is the bridge gonna start and where is it gonna the end approaches. as far as Seabrook and Hampton mm -hmm. are concerned? It's gonna be a lot more. I would assume it has to be longer. Yeah. And then what if boats get bigger over time? It doesn't go up anymore? I mean, I think... A 40 feet high. Like, I, should... I mean, they have it in Portsmouth. It's beautiful. It works. Mm. Is they it on a it schedule all over there? the country. Everywhere, you know. It's one thing if you want to spend a fortune um, to spend that extra money, but why should the town of Hampton spend the money? Right. And I'm totally opposed to just uh, taking out property so that they can, you know, do the it other the way alternative they want to do that it. I thought of is why don't they put a, um, you know, what happens in other communities like Florida when they have to do something with a bridge or with a highway? They add a little uh, uh, fee, on, you know, they increase the tax, the sales tax. We have no sales tax, so we can't do something like that. Sure. But why? I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed if they put a um, a toll on it. That's they had they a toll the there. Last time. That yes, and they had a toll there for years. Why should the town of Hampton? And if they wanted to, they could just put the toll and use it in the summertime, and uh, then in the wintertime not do and make sure the town is reimbursed for the money that they would be getting. I don't see the town re uh, paying this money. I would rather see a toll. Uh, that is fair to everybody that lives uptown. It's not just, you know, this is, it's getting ridiculous what's happening. Um, at the state. Hampton Area Commission meeting this week, they're going to ha uh, be considering if property values are being devalued at Hampton Beach. And again, you know, that's, it, when properties are devalued, then all of the whole town is paying more in taxes. So we have to start thinking of this in a long term and how it is affecting in the future. 
because this is something that's like an annuity. We should be getting this money for years. So I think they ought to consider putting a toll or finding some other way to get that money, give it to us out of the uh, uh, rooms and meals tax or wh however they <laughs> want to do it. But why should we pay for it? If property values aren't devalued now with that crappy old bridge, that piece of garbage that's sitting there. Well, I don't know. It doesn't look that garbage. bad. Garbage. But I'm sure it's not good. Jim? Yeah, I just, I, I cannot vote on this because I don't have enough information. I mean, I would just like to, I mean, I'd like to read that report, even, even though it's 100 pages, because I'd like to have more information before I say something. I mean, again, the, will they end up doing it anyways? And then mm -hmm. we lose anyways, and then we lose in a court fight when we have to spend yeah. money to, to go to a lawyer and stuff. And I, I agree, you know, that, that they should well, all, all we're asking for right now is do we, do we even want to have a voice in this? Do we, want, do we want to talk about it? And what he's looking for is... When will they vote? Well, this is only an advisory committee. This is only the yeah. advisory they're committee, they're looking for hearing, input. Okay. Um, next month. All right. And, and um, after that hearing, they're going to want the committee to get together and to vote on whether or not the towns will support whatever they propose. Okay. Yeah. So th there is no report currently. Okay. They just I'm just summarizing up what they have talked okay. to us about. So it's just advisory that this where we want to go with it. And they'll advise the state once they finish with that report. It'll go to the state, and the state will then adopt it, and they will go ahead and do what they need to do to, to build a bridge. Now, on that on that committee, there, there are fishermen and people that make a living out of the harbor also? There are people from all around the harbor. Yeah. yeah. I think okay. there is someone on the committee that has actually owns one of those houses, isn't there? Uh, no, it's on the other end of the bridge. Yeah. Oh, it's the other and end. And it doesn't bury their house, but it does take yeah. down some state property on the other yeah. side, on the Hampton end. Right. And this is not exactly moving along at a fast pace. No, not really. No, <laughs> it'll probably happen after the um, Ocean Boulevard is done. Ocean snails are moving <laughs> faster. So you, I think yeah. you've got kind of consensus of this board that they really don't want to see our properties taken if they don't have to be. That, uh, that's kind of was my feeling too. It's and just in, a, in, a, in, a, in any case, if we're losing any money, we want to see a reimbursement. Right, right. Yeah. And I'll make that motion if you want to have a motion. And I, I don't think I need a motion. I just want yeah. a consensus of how the board feels I think it's a consensus. so that I know right. how I'm voting on behalf of the citizens of this town yeah. and the board. Since we're talking about the state right now, I was going over some NHMA stuff, and, uh, and then I also saw an email that Fred had sent, it looks like, to the senator and the state reps in the middle of December. And it looks like they've established all their new committees and everything that they're going to be doing. So I was wondering if... You know, we're talking about rooms and meals tax and things like that. If we could maybe schedule to have them come in in February. Sure. Sure. It's probably because a good time for them. Why not? There's another thing here, too, that I thought maybe someone else was going to bring up, but our uh, the state aid for wastewater assistance, it looks like that might change, which is one thing I'd like <laughs> to talk to them about. State aid for water, well, for uh, our sewer plant, um, put it down in brass tax here. Um, the State Department of Environmental Services has amended their administrative regulations. In the past, and I think we're all familiar with this, if you applied and you had a project and they approved the project, they would pay 20% of that project. Because Hampton is so rich yes. and so wealthy, <laughs> uh, our, our sliding scale is now down to be between 0 and 5% yeah. of those projects, yeah. probably closer to 0 so we may or may not be able to count in the future on any additional money from the state for improvements to the sewer system. Nice and conquered, aren't they? Can we raise our hand before we talk? Go ahead. I think, sure. okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, but the money we're getting for now for the wastewater treatment plant, that's still in effect? Are we, are we getting 20% for the... Not, we don't know we're getting 20% of this. We don't know. Yet. Don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm not happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Thank you. All right. And just think of all uh, bathrooms that get used after they sell those $15 martinis at the beach going right to the sewer plant. <laughs> and we're getting nothing. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's why I want to have the but, state reps in. But this is the state of New Hampshire. No, whose representatives don't want to come to Hampton 
and sit on channel 22 and talk to the board okay. because they're afraid the board will so be rude to them. Next question we have is a question about <coughs> channel 22 garage for the van. Excellent. Yes, uh, the board had requested me to look into this problem and see whether or not we could build a garage out and back mm -hmm. using the Channel 22 funds to, to store that van indoors so it'll be protected. And I will preface my further remarks by saying that the prior van we had were broken, was broken into at least twice, which means that we have to take everything out of the van and bring it in the building when it's not in use and then take it back out every time we need mm -hmm. to use the van. Uh, we have a proposal that the building department obtained for me, a, an estimate. Um, the estimate is $44,752.30. That includes a, uh, uh, the erection of the, uh, the foundation, um, which will be a monolithic slab, and the erection of the, uh, the structure itself, uh, the insulation, electrical work, and, and uh, heating that needs to be put in the building, um, which is very minimal and um, painting, interior finishes, uh, landscaping, um, drywall, and the uh, cement floor sealant, so the cement floor is protected. Uh, how does the board want me to proceed from this point? We now have an estimate. We can start working forward with something that the board wishes to do. Mr. Chairman, I will move that we implement the manager's plan. We can't keep losing, uh, losing valuable equipment. Does have a security system, Fred, for it? We can do that. We actually, we can put a camera right up off the back Excellent. of the building. Excellent. Uh, I'm just reading this that it says the exclusion yeah. are all landscaping, interior yep. finish, right. painting, insulation, yep. drywall. Interior work. Yep. Finish it's, interior work. That's is not it? included in that's this. Correct. It's just a basic, basic shell. Basic building. Right. Yep. Basic shell with uh, minimal electrical. But I agree that if we're going to have electrical in there, we probably should have some sort of. Yep. It should be attached to the alarm here or. Yes, it should. Yes. Yep. I'll second it. Yeah, that's, I'm fine with it, but I have a question about how much money do we? We have plenty of money in the. This would come from the cable committee fund, right? Yeah, Correct. Right. We have several hundred thousand dollars in there. Yep. I have a. Yes. If I may, raise my hand before I talk. Uh, Is this a legitimate taking out of the fund? Yes. Okay. This is solely so. for the Channel 22. It's solely for their van and solely mm -hmm. for its protection. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can't use it for anything else, and I think everybody needs to be appraised of that. This cannot be used for something else. Good. I will be fine to agree to this motion made, but I just, at some point, um, I was talking to my Channel 22 constituent as I do not have Channel 22 at home because I, don't, I have DirecTV. And she was telling me that um, she's nervous because it seems like all, all the cable funds, now correct me if I'm wrong, come from people that actually have Comcast for cable. So if you have internet, you don't pay it. So there seems to be a lot less people now in town from what I'm hearing that have cable Comcast because well, I have it for internet and I can understand why. They're not happy and they're leaving and there's other alternatives, dark TV, satellite, stuff like that. But at some point in time, will the cable advisory committee be looking at the difference between the amount of people that actually have cable now compared to what they used to and how much we're taking in as a town for revenue? Rusty? Yeah, yeah the, ca the, 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 the cable renewal committee currently has a survey being being built up by mm -hmm. the Rockingham Planning Commission which will be online right. and will be also a hard copy so people can look at it and we will get the opinion of the people we Perfect. also will get a number of people that are doing it and I agree with you 100% right. there are fewer and fewer and fewer cable probably going to go out the window at some point yeah. and that that's a that's a valid point that that's going to change everything in the way it's done and and yes we will be looking into that all right thank you very much yeah, so i'd like to uh point out too i don't even have direct tv i just have the uh antenna it works wonderful that, yeah. and now alexa i just have to tell her to put net uh <laughs> netflix on it happens it's so easy i can't imagine what how they'll be in business in a couple of more <clears throat> years right. Uh, so right now we have a motion on the floor right to approve 
the spending of $45,000 out of the cable fund. Out of the cable fund for the installation of a building out back here that is specifically for the cable committee and the cable van. To secure the van. To secure the van. You might as well do it before they there isn't the money there. There are a motion, a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Good job. Thank on you. That. And thanks for the advice on the bridge. I really appreciate that. That's a, um, may something I really bothered me. May I ask a favor of the manager <coughs> before we uh, go into non-public with council? Um, you gave us the assessing office recap for 2018. I think it might be nice if uh, Regina had copies just of the cover sheet to, to show the value of the town and so forth uh, for, the, for her to share with the um, budget committee. I didn't give that to you. You didn't? Who did? No, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, well, the assessor. I the mean, assessor of his office may have sent it yeah. up, yeah. Oh, so if we could have a copy just of the cover sheet, I think it might be nice for Regina yeah, sure. to bring in show the taxable value of the town, the precinct, all that yeah, stuff. That's fine. They might as well have a little yeah. more information. I thought it was very interesting. Uh, it, yeah, it comes off the MS report to the DRA. Yeah. 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 All right, any closing comments? Mr. Chairman, could you uh, entertain a motion to go into a non public session under? New Hampshire RSA 91 hyphen capital A <laughs> colon 3 Roman 2 small e litigation. I and will a roll so call vote. I will so move. We have a motion Aye. and a second. A roll call vote. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Time. Time is 8.51. 8.51. Thank you, Channel 22. I'm not leaving. I'm just going.